um, the um, Wayne actually asked for this to be on the agenda. It's um, a discussion about how we could how we could help businesses as we start to reopen the economy. Um, a lot of the focus here is on outdoor dining. Uh, the governor has opened up retail at 25% of capacity, um, which is actually uh, quite a few people. I think that we were talking to one retailer the other night and their store capacity is 160. So their 25% capacity is 40 people, which is actually for the size of the store, pretty sizable, a pretty fair number of people. It's not the biggest store in town. Um, I'd say it's probably, uh, I don't know, three or 4,000 square feet, maybe. I could be totally wrong on that, but. Um, so the governor has opened up that. The next steps are probably gonna be outdoor dining um, at some point. Uh, hospitality seems to be a little trickier, but we thought it might make sense for the board to discuss what the town might be able to do to help uh, businesses uh, through the process of reopening. And again, it seems like a lot of the discussion here might be restaurants. Uh, that's the easiest one, but there's a little bit of retail uh, here as well. And then um, rest or um, hospitality uh, inns and hotels and motels, uh, that'll be more closely governed by the state. And I'm not sure there's that much that we can do short term um, as they start to reopen. Here's some of the ideas that we had, though. Um, we did talk to Paul Carocchio, uh, John Burnham, and uh, Brian Maggio, who's the actually the uh, president of the Bennington or the Southern Vermont Chamber of Commerce. And then of course, Paul and John are in charge of the uh, Manchester Business Association. And uh, John, here's a John, if I may uh, interrupt, and I know it takes me a second to bleed in. Um, yeah. uh, we've been joined by a, a ninth person. Um, and uh, I'm not sure who it is. Uh, it says uh, Brian's phone, Brian's iPhone. Yeah, that's that's Brian Maggiano. I oh, thought maybe I thought maybe it was. Welcome, thank you. You're okay. very welcome. Glad to be here. Um, so here's a couple here's a couple ideas that we had um, in sort of uh, kicking this idea around. Um, and I'm not presenting. I'm presenting all the ideas pretty evenly here. I, I have my opinions on what would work better, uh, but I just thought. We just put it right all on the table and, and see what the board thinks. So uh, the first one, uh, Ivan, I also talked to Doug Kilburn uh, about this, but in the past we have not allowed restaurants to take outdoor seats and move them, or indoor seats and move them outside, largely because um, if you took 20 seats and moved them outside, in our history a lot of times the seats would get replicated inside but would never necessarily get taken out from the outside seats. Um, but I think at this point, especially given that restaurants, if they open up, are probably going to be at 25 or 50 percent at best as things start to open up more and more, uh, is to allow them to put seats outside, at least through November 15th. Uh, Brian, who's on the phone, I uh, did note that November 15th might be a little ambitious for outdoor dining, but <laughs> I guess everything's on the table with COVID-19. Um, but that just seemed like a, an easy point to to uh to cut it off for now and then re-examine that uh, the other one is to allow assuming that the governor is not going to allow more than 50 percent occupancy is to allow businesses either restaurants or retail to use half of their parking spaces um, on a semi-permanent basis and so each business is a little bit different we kind of went around around town and, and pictured what each restaurant or business might look like I think for a business like, uh, for this one, we were talking more about Seasons and Haig Sports Bar, uh, he, that he has parking spots that are sort of in the front of the business and some on the side, and that he might be able to convert some of those outdoor parking spaces, well, all, all parking spaces are outside, but some of those parking spaces uh, to, uh, to actually covered or uh, covered space in some, in some way. Uh, and then you look at a restaurant like Christo's, that's a little bit more complicated, Historic Main Street, um, the other place that this might be able to play out is a, is a restaurant like Firefly uh, or even uh, Depot 62 and um, Manchester House of Pizza could use that space out back, Ivan, where the employee parking is. Um, 
So this is sort of based on the idea that, that indoor occupancy wouldn't be greater than 50%. Uh, we talked to Janet, I'll let her weigh in on this as well, but um, if your occupancy is gonna be 50%, then it seems like using half of your parking spaces, uh, if you have a parking issue after COVID-19 opens up, uh, that would be that would be a pretty pretty wonderful thing if you actually had a, a lack of parking. Um, the next one that we have, a couple businesses, or at least one business has, has approached us about doing vending on their location. So they'd be selling, they'd be um, preparing and selling food at a location on their site. Uh, the one that comes to mind is Bonnet and Maine would like to do gelato vending at the, I, I call it the Thomas Jefferson Park, kind of on the roundabout there. And so we're saying that we'd still require businesses to file a vending application just so we know who's who's doing what but that we waive the fee for 2020 uh, the only caveat that i would suggest is that you only waive it for businesses that were operating as a food establishment in 2019 so that we don't have a whole bunch of new food vendors show up in town the real idea is here is that allowing a restaurant to not just do their food inside but also be able to do some sort of um, uh, street food or something like that in this case it's gelato uh, but to be able to do something like that. Uh, the second to last idea that we had was uh, putting picnic tables at the Town Green or Adams Park spaced out. I asked Joe Miles what the cost would be and he said the retail price is 140. Um, he told me if we were interested in doing something that come back and talk to him more. Um, I think the bigger, it's not really the cost of the picnic tables, it's more what do we do with picnic tables after this is all over um, if we bought a bunch of picnic tables. These are pine picnic tables, so they don't, we don't typically use those in our parks anymore because they, they don't last that long. Uh, and then the last uh, piece that I have here, I have a couple of examples, but a lot of um, attention has been focused on Main Street uh, between the Button Roundabout and say um, the old Heinels, where space is pretty tight. And um, I've got a couple ideas here. Uh, one idea that was kicked around that that's obviously has some logistical issues is just to close the street down. I think people have mentioned this uh, quite a bit. The uh, example that's always given is Church Street. Um, of course, Church Street has uh, a bunch of streets around it that all grid up so you can get around Church Street and you've got those crossroads. So um, a couple of issues here is uh, the bank gets deliveries for um, you know the Brinks truck and then you'd have food deliveries I think on Church Street, they allow deliveries up to a certain period of time. This, this would be a little bit tougher. Um, I counted up. I think there's 28 parking spaces along Main Street, so those would all be lost, of course. And then you've also got uh, two curb cuts here that pop out onto Main Street that would be problematic. Uh, you can access them from the back uh, to get around. Uh, so a little bit. And then, of course, all of your traffic would be toured, be toured either – along Memorial Ave or Center Hill. And then the uh, option number two, and there's, there's a couple more options beyond this. These are all the exhaustive ones. The next one is uh, just close the northbound lane and uh, have southbound traffic, but northbound traffic would get detoured. So you've got half the cars being detoured now uh, and you have no conflict with curb cuts here, but you're losing 20 parking spaces and you've got half the, half the vehicles detoured. Uh, and then the third one is limited closures. I gave the example here of, um, of uh, Christos. I, ha I have not talked to them, uh, so I, I can't say that uh, they are either for or against this. And you see out, up for breakfast there as well, who I believe. Um, uh, same owners. Yeah, the, yeah same owners. Uh, so this would be, um, basically some kind of barrier. You'll see this a lot in, uh, in large cities where they're doing sidewalk work and they detour pedestrians out into the road. Uh, and so we would detour pedestrians out into the parking spaces here where my, where my cursor is. There's a curb cut back here that we could pick up. Uh, so you could have ADA access. You would move along here and then you'd pop back out here uh, and then the idea would be that we'd have uh, tables on the sidewalk. We think that the, you know, the barriers would be uh, substantial barriers. They, for safety purposes, you'd have to use um, uh, something like a, a, cement, a cement block or a jersey barrier or something like that in order to get enough protection there for pedestrians. 
Um, you know, the only real down to downside, there's no detours. Uh, the pedestrians would be, um, would be uh, detoured and then you'd have loss of parking in front of certain businesses, but you wouldn't have the entire street. Um, so I think those are the three options. Uh, you know, we've talked mostly about main street. I mean, this could apply in other places as well. Uh, but mostly the ability to kind of go out into the street would be uh, for the most part, Main Street. So each person has a little bit of different um, need. I know that Janet is having a meeting for Yield Tavern. Uh, Wayne, if you remember where the sewer line comes out of Yield Tavern, yeah, um, that patio space outside. there. Yeah, so it would be the, the <coughs> south side there, the little courtyard. Uh, he has an application in for outdoor seating, and uh, his actually, would I have, have three make, for the next meeting. Oh, three. Um, Yield Tavern, Bonnet and Main, and the new location for the Little Rooster all yep. have um, new outdoor seating arrangements that they want approved. And I'm looking at them as administrative approvals um, mm -hmm. with design advisory committee, you know, review. Mm -hmm. The thing about all of these areas, all of our commercial areas are in the design review district. And if we've always required that outdoor um, <coughs> manifestations of any kind require a permit, mm 